Hi, I'm Jeremy. I have four dogs here, and so I'm always looking for toys to engage and play with them and things that will last. Uh, we have two whippets, we have a border collie, and we have a Rottweiler. When I read on a toy that it's durable, I immediately am skeptical because most are not, at least not when it comes to a Rottweiler. So what we're going to do today is look at a chew toy and take a look at that with the Rottweiler and if it lasts long enough, maybe with one of the other dogs. This one is supposed to be a dental toy with these little plastic pieces stimulating the dog's gums and, uh, or gum line along the teeth. I don't know with a Rottweiler how long that will last. Now one of the key things is when you give a dog a toy, supervise. I can't give this to my Rottweiler and go away. Chances are he might ingest the whole thing. At least if he breaks some part of it or starts to chew and it rips or tears, I can be there and I can take away the pieces. Oddly, it has a very big similarity to dryer balls. Now I took a look at these dryer balls. You know, dog toys are, can be quite expensive. So I happened to see these in the same aisle on the other side at a store I was in the other day. So I thought, you know what, let me bring these dryer balls home too and just check, make sure there's no fragrance or harmful chemical or anything like that inside. And you know, if they're good, you get four of these for roughly the price of one of these on sale. So maybe there's a new dog toy in the neighborhood. We'll take them outside with our Rottweiler Olsen and see what happens. Sit. Look. No. This is Olsen. He's a two-year-old Rottweiler, and he's already heard something squeak in my pocket, so he knows there must be some kind of toy or something happening. He's in a wait at the moment, and a down and wait, but that won't last for long, especially if I squeak it, which means he still needs a little more work in that area. But for now, let's release him and see what he likes of these toys. Holding it here like I am is called proofing. You notice he's not been released, so he's staying where he belongs. But the moment I say the word, which is spelled B-R-E-A-K, he's done. Break! There you go. And we're gonna see how he enjoys this toy. Generally, as a trainer, I don't like self-amusement. I like to engage with the dog. And that would be where I'm engaging with him with the toy. Right now, I'm just letting him engage with it. Good for him, not so good for us. And when I say not so good for us, I mean most all of our training is relationship-based, so it's always about Olsen and my interaction with him. We build trust, we build engagement, we have a lot of fun. Olsen bring. Bad dog training, Olsen. Where are you going? Thank you. Oh, ring, 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 ring. Where is it? Thank you. What a good boy. So engagement can be as simply as me letting him fetch it. Throwing it, tugging with him, things like that. I really don't know how strong this is. So I'm not going to tug just yet. And he is really primed for this. So I'm going to let him go get it. See the drool? Go get it. And that wasn't an obedience command, that's just like a release and let him go play with it. Why, thank you, what a good boy. Look. Wait, hold, take. Hey. Olsen, up. 
We've been playing for a few minutes. Olsen's still engaged with this toy. It's held up so far, and I'm gonna give it to him again. Easy, take notes. Good boy. Wait. Wait. Ah! No. No. Yes, take hold. Bad dog. Bad dog train. Down. Olsen. Down. So this is where I wonder how long something will last. Olsen is down on the ground. He's got the toy between his front paws and those jaws and teeth can do a heck of a job shredding plastic or splitting seams. Let's see what happens. Get that toy. Get that toy. And this is a good time to practice one of our commands. Olsen. Look out. Look. Up here. Out. Good boy. Wait. When I work with a dog, there are a lot of basic commands I want them to obey. All the things you've heard about on other training programs like sit, stay, down, come, heal, wait. And with a dog like this, they can easily get things in their mouth that don't belong in there. We actually have these trees behind me. These are referred to as Euphorbia turricoli or fire sticks. And they have a white sap, which is harmful to dogs. So you say, well, why would I have this in the house? Well, these have been here for a while and I teach the dogs to leave them alone. If they do pick up a branch, a stick, or even a, a piece that's broken off, they know the out command. And so when I say out, they should release what's in their mouth. Olsen had this toy. You can see he's, he's like a coiled spring at the moment. He really wants it. But when I said out, he just dropped it. I would have preferred that he waited for me. I usually teach them to hold what they have and then they release it to my hand, but that was just fine. So now he's earned that engagement with me. He released it to me and I'll tell him he can go get it and he can go play with it, have fun. There you go, boob. You want to play with me? Olsen! Up here! Olsen! Olsen, up here! Come on! Up! Now he's used to a hard dumbbell. The hard dumbbell does not squish in his mouth. So this is a little different. Olsen, hold. Good! Hold. So I have Olsen holding this toy. I'm going to have him release it to me, which is something he really is not gonna to wanna to do. But he'll do it, and then I'll trade off the toy for a treat. Out. Excellent boy. What a good boy. Look, up here. Up here, good boy, nicely. Excellent. So there's a reason I'm calling my channel Bad Dog Training. There really are bad dogs. They're mischievous dogs. They're dogs that will exploit you. But most of the problems tend to come from our lack of attention or care or lack of understanding as trainers. So bad dog here, let's see what he does. What I'm going to do is give him a, give him a toy, hope that he engages the, with the toy, keeps his focus on me, releases to me, and then gets a treat. Who knows how it'll go? Wait, hold, look. Hold. So tempting for him to mouth the toy because it's soft, it stimulates his gums. Watch. Excellent. Excellent. Out. Good boy. Take a treat.
good boy. Okay, get it. We've gone a few minutes now with Olsen having fun with his toy. Toys usually don't last long in my world with the Rottweilers. But he's having some fun, and you have to gauge what's right for you. This is approximately a $6 toy, and we've had five minutes. It may not seem like much, but with a Rottweiler, five minutes on a $6 toy, six minutes on a $6 toy, I'm starting to consider that we may be ahead of the game. Olsen! Olsen, Olsen! And there's my bad dog. What's this work to you? For us, it's a lot of good exercise. Nelson, Nelson! Where'd it go? Bring, bring. Up here. Good boy. Thank you. Sit. What a good sit. Do you want to get the toy? Do you want to get the toy? I'm engaging the dog now. Oh, look, I got your focus up here. You want to go get that toy? I'm going to throw it for you. You're going to get that toy. Oh, where'd the squeaker go? Where's the squeaker? Get it. Now, I didn't ask him to recall with it, to fetch it to me or anything like that. We're just having fun. I'm just playing with him. There are a lot of things I could do in structured exercises, but right now I'm just letting him burn off some energy. One thing you may notice is that I threw the toy downward. That would be the correct thing to do. Most people just throw a toy with their arm. It may arc way up in the air. The dog can go up on its hind legs and potentially have a tear. So I try to throw those balls down, keep them fairly low, and that way the dog can run to them, get them, run around them, pounce on them, but not up in the air. Can you say ACL? We're not gonna have an ACL tear, right? Why are we not gonna have that? Because we're gonna throw it low. Down. Good boy, all the way. Good boy. Wait. Olsen's now working on about 15 minutes. He's starting to slow down just a little bit. I don't know that much, but just a little bit. If I had another dog out here, he would go until his legs were ready to break because he'd be engaging with the other dog. Now, I could engage him as well, but right now we're just letting him self-motivate. Here, Olsen. Good boy, down. Good. Now he brings me the toy and he would love, lie down. He would love to play with me. So I can come up with some games, I can squeak, I can animate the toy, and I can show my interest in the toy. Oh, look at that. Down. Look at that toy. Down. Look at that toy. But when I talk to the toy, boy, does he get motivated for that toy. Even if he wasn't before, this is how you make a dog really get interested in what you're playing with. A lot of people say, well, my dog doesn't like to play. Well, you're probably not that much fun. So become fun, become fun with the toy. Show your interest in the toy. The dog is gonna want the interest in the toy after you, and then you'll play. I'm gonna go up against the wall in a moment because Olsen likes to overrun whatever it is that he's picking up. So by putting it up against an obstacle, in this case, a low wall, we're gonna make sure he has to stop, hopefully not crack his head into the wall, but we're gonna put this up against the wall so that for his pickup, he has to slow down. No, no. Bad dog. Bad dog training. That's right. Sit. Wait. We're going to put this low against the wall so that when Olsen goes to get it, he has to slow down and not overrun his toy. Wait. 
that may be a little too far. I'm gonna put it right there so that his mouth can reach over the toy. Now his release command is the word that's spelled B-R-E-A-K. He hasn't learned to spell it yet, but when I say it, he knows. Break! And he's off. We just finished about 20 minutes of Olsen engaging with this toy. Seems to really like it. Seems to like the tactile stimulation, the auditory response. I see that there's a seam alongside, so I'd be very careful with that seam. I wouldn't put him in a crate or a room anywhere unsupervised, because if he were to rip it or tear it, that could end up in a vet visit if he starts ingesting a lot of plastic or rubber pieces that we don't want him to. So this is a toy I would definitely say requires some supervision. Now as to value, on a scale of one to five, you have to decide what it's worth to you. If it's a four to six dollar toy, and I get 20 minutes out of it, I say that's a plus. And that's because I have Rottweilers and other dogs that can really destroy toys. If you've got a little toy, and you don't think 20 minutes for the five or six dollars is sufficient, then you have to weigh that. But right now, I would give this a solid, a solid four because I know until this breaks he's gonna love it. Go Olsen.